pause for a moment to look at the requirements for tree growth. Those growth resources that a tree needs to grow optimally. We all know that from an above ground point of view, trees need carbon dioxide so that they can sequester that carbon, turn it into carbohydrates. They also need light to be able to photosynthesize. But what about the root system? What does the root system need for optimum functioning? First of all, we have to have a volume of soil that is large enough for anchorage for the tree roots. There must also be sufficient nutrients in the soil that the plant can take this up. There must be water for evaporation, transpiration, uh, collectively just evapotranspiration. And of course, uh, there must also be aeration for the roots. Very few plants have got adaptations whereby the roots can grow under completely waterlogged conditions. We think here of mangrove swamp trees. Um, in North America, you have the taxodium species, for example, that can grow very well under waterlogged conditions, but they have special structures on their roots to be able to get oxygen for the roots. Pneumatophores. Whereas we don't have that in most other species and therefore oxidation in the root profile is very important. So let us look first of all at the volume of soil. Is there enough soil to be able to supply all these growth resources? And let's just think for a moment about things that can limit the amount of soil that's available to trees. First of all, there could be a very shallow impeding layers. Let's just say a soil profile is very shallow and then it is situated on hard rock. Very few roots will be able to penetrate into little cracks into that rock and there will not be much water or nutrients to be gained by going into little cracks. So in such a situation we basically dependent on that top layer up until the sheet rock. That can be a very serious impediment. In other cases, we can also be partly responsible for impediments. For example, if we create compacted layers by, for example, plowing clay soils in agriculture that can smear the clay at a certain plow layer, for example. We can also cause compaction with heavy machinery. Or certain soils just have a texture that is so constructed that it can very densely pack together and become very hard setting when it dries out. Last but not least, there is also the danger of water logging. If we have a layer in the soil where water does not filter through, or penetrate through very well and accumulates, causing long periods of water logging, we will get a situation where the root environment becomes anoxic and then plant growth will suffer. So these are the things I want you to look out for when we start looking into the soils and one of our greatest allies in this uh, area when we start looking for waterlogged horizons is to look at the color of the soil. Uh, when a soil is well oxidized, in other words, well aerated, there will be red, yellow and brown colors in the soil. Your typical colors that you get when metal rusts is just the same as that you'll get in a soil that is well oxidized. When there is a periodic water table that sometimes saturates up to a certain point and then goes down again, we will get alternate places of oxidation and reduction. And we, the soil will then have a mottled appearance. So often when we see mottling in the soil, it's indicative of a fluctuating water table. And then lastly, if we have a permanent waterlog condition, the soil will have a slightly greenish gray hue. It may be a little bit gray or a little bit yellowish gray or greenish gray, but it'll be a very dull color. And we refer to such a, an horizon as a glade horizon, G-L-E-Y, a glade horizon. In short, just a G horizon can also suffice. The last question we have to ask is, around root volume is if we have any of these impeding layers or a waterlogged horizon or a hard setting soil, can it be ameliorated? Or if we are going to ameliorate it, what would be the risks involved with such an operation? Um, and we have to think about things like erosion risk when we start to 
do physical manipulation of the soil. It is possible to expose a lot of the soil, uh, expose additional surfaces of the soil, and loosen it in such a way that it predisposes it for erosion. Amelioration is to see what can realistically be done with the soil, on what kind of a slope are we working, what kind of vegetation cover do we have or forest floor cover do we have, are we going to destroy it in the amelioration process and may this lead to erosion or can we manage the situation well.